Mario! This video is sponsored by Squarespace, helping you bring your business to life through amazing intuitive websites you can build yourself. If you haven't noticed by now, I love the original Luigi's Mansion. So, so much. In some ways, my affection for it gets stifled simply because the game's map is so small in scale. But my imagination wants there to be more. So we've covered coins out of bounds, black holes consuming the mansion, giant treasure chests, and a whole lot more. But there's still one peculiar thing left to cover. What I'll be talking about in this video actually has to do with how I believe Luigi's Mansion changed before the final version, and how some left behind camera placements actually hinted areas that used to exist. We'll be covering two areas in the game that are by far the most bizarre rooms in all Luigi's Mansion. And just so you know, I'm not referring to beta maps or anything. These areas I'm covering exist within the real mansion itself, just not accessible due to collision. So let's start off by talking about the whole camera thing. Throughout the game, the camera obviously follows Luigi around at a set distance. The only time it speeds up and slows down is when we advance rooms. That's important to know for several reasons, especially when Luigi is traveling left to right or right to left. Whether Luigi utilizes a door or even if he clips through a wall, the camera will rush to showcase the next room. This is because the camera is generally aligned to the grid of Luigi's Mansion. It's constantly sliding along room by room to highlight the areas that are coming up next, and also so that it can unload the rooms we just left. However, this only occurs when leaving or entering actual defined rooms in the mansion. It's a programmed function that the camera follows. But what's interesting is that someone had to create these movements because they aren't automated by default. They trigger when a room boundary is advanced. And that's what makes this pretty exciting. So in the past, I've talked about how Luigi's Mansion as a whole is basically inside a giant black void. Each room is stacked alongside each other, and the absolute exterior regions of this black box cannot be entered through normal means. They are the edges of the map. That is, unless a black hole sucks you way out of bounds. Which, if you aren't familiar with that concept, I recommend watching my previous video. But this means that the camera does not advance forward on any exterior walls for the mansion neither in the basement or on any of the floors, but it does outside. And this is what is super cool. There are two regions in the mansion that still have camera data left over, despite them being off limits. So let's tackle each one and describe what it was probably used for. First, we had the extension of the courtyard. The courtyard as a room spans the entirety of the mansion from left to right, only feeding into the graveyard in the back left corner. However, even though the boundaries of the mansion are supposed to end to the right of the room, they actually don't. Even though all the other rooms do, there's actually a section beyond the fence we can explore. The thing is though, if we are never meant to ever go here, the camera should stay locked on the screen as we wander off it. But the camera jumps to another room slot once we are beyond the fence. And what we have is a small close off area that is next to Boo Woods. Now, this makes me wonder a few things. If they bothered to program a camera pan, was there originally a path here? Or perhaps you could go into the woods? Suspend disbelief for a second though, because that idea might not actually be too far-fetched. And I'll get to that in a moment. From here, we can actually see a cold out view of the side of the mansion yard, which is pretty interesting. Now let's swing over to the next area, a place I believe used to be an extension to area two. When we're going to face Bogmire, the boss of Area 2, we end up traversing through the Boneyard into the Graveyard. However, part of me thinks the process of doing so wasn't as simple as it is now. Currently, you have to scan the doghouse, get swept up by the wind, and your spit into the Graveyard. But just like the Courtyard, we have a room that's actually next to the Graveyard. The interesting thing about this room is that it appears to have the collision of a tunnel as it's narrow and only walkable near the line that divides the boneyard and the graveyard. It continues onto the edge of Boo Woods underground, and then just stops. In many ways, it mirrors the courtyard area we just talked about. Something to note is that this region isn't cleared as Luigi begins to hum his haunted tune. His flashlight clicks on too, even though the rooms we just left were clear and fully brightened, which make it so you don't need a flashlight. This means this tunnel area is under a different status than the previous rooms, meaning it's deemed as a hallway or a new room entirely. Even if the entire mansion is cleared, this still happens. So it might be hard to tell based on the footage, but the area we are in is basically like a rectangle that extends to the left of the graveyard. It's important to note that it's impossible for Luigi to move out of bounds anywhere else in this room except for this region. The areas up north cannot be moved past, 
as it is the absolute edges of the map. But this tunnel area is completely different. We do have a limit on how north we can move in the tunnel, and anything beyond that is level boundaries. Something else that is interesting is that the stone wall that divides the graveyard and the boneyard actually extends alongside this underground tunnel or cave. I find it odd that the developers did that even though it wasn't needed at all. If you think about it, one would only need to fence off the graveyard on one side, because the rocky outcrop of Boo Woods is what keeps the graveyard actually contained. The only reason why the fence would continue on in any capacity is if this used to be a path of some kind that Luigi was meant to walk on. Currently, it feels like a cave, because they built up Boo Woods over the old collision, but it could have been an above ground path at one point too. This extended fence is a huge hint that a developer left behind for us, and it really gets you thinking. So this is where we dive into Theoryland for a bit, because I strongly believe these areas actually allow Luigi to leave the mansion to go to other places. Based off the beta footage, it's apparent what we normally see over the fence in the boneyard was different, as the graveyard cannot actually be seen. This leads me to believe that there actually used to be an underground tunnel or a path through the woods that led to where the graveyard was. The graveyard wasn't north of the boneyard, it was next to it or farther away. Since we don't have any records of what Luigi's Mansion was like when it was on the Nintendo 64, it's hard to tell how much the world changed, but we do have one clue that solidifies this way of thinking. EGAD's Lab. By now, you've probably watched people hack into EGAD's Lab and restore mobility. This allows them to walk around and to also climb the giant ladder that is next to EGAD. The fact that this was climbable means that Luigi was meant to go outside the mansion at some point, with the capability of walking to and from EGAD's Lab. With this in mind, it would make sense to have other areas that branched off of the mansion, like paths through the woods or underground tunnels to other areas. In this version of the game, the main mansion would appear to be treated more like a main dungeon that you keep coming back to to progress. I think it'd be neat to visit a haunted shack in the woods that branched off the right side of the courtyard, or an extended route that made the journey to the graveyard much longer. Moving the graveyard and putting it somewhere much more isolated would have made it feel extremely spooky, and I think it would have been pretty neat. Perhaps these scrapped sections eventually led to the idea of Dark Moon, and how Luigi's journey takes him across a multitude of different areas. However, I would absolutely still love to see what all of this originally looked like someday. Perhaps we'll be blessed with a beta leak of some kind, because a free exploration Luigi's Mansion would have been super awesome. With that said, what do you think these areas were used for? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Sponsorships help out a ton, so I want to thank Squarespace for supporting me with my deep dives into video games. Many years ago, prior to doing YouTube, I actually did freelance web design, and if I had something like Squarespace back then, my life would have been way easier. The slick templates they have allow you to design eye-catching, stunning websites to promote your business or side hustle in just the right way. They make it easy so you can create the online presence of your dreams without having to understand all the coding you'd normally need. So, ready to create your new website? Make it with Squarespace and get 10% off your first Squarespace order with offer code SWANKYBOX. You can find an offer link in the description below. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this haunted speculation. Perhaps you'd like to see how to summon black holes in Luigi's Mansion, or go on a knowledge quest to find the lost coins in the game. Give either video a click. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.